a little child. I heard that there's prophecy over that little child and I'm concerned about my place. Look at the age gap. The age gap is enough comfort to know that most likely by the time this child becomes an adult, he will be dead. And yet envy can make an intelligent person be that dull to reduce yourself and pursue mundane things. A king threatened by a baby who is not even aware he's there. Is someone learning? I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among preachers, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among business people, but it does. I wish I would tell you that this does not exist among brethren in church, it does. So here comes a powerful testimony. And while others are crying, someone is in anger. So the triplets finally came. And you are saying, that while all are crying and say we rejoice this woman someone else I can tell you it's a painful thing but not everybody claps when you are lifted there are people your arrival brings an end to their dispensation they will fight it John the Baptist who called Jesus to ministry and ordained him Jesus himself submitted to John and the Bible acknowledged that John was the guest of the prophets. Let me show you what envy can do. It can spill over to offense of all sorts. When John was done, he said it beautifully so that I must decrease that he will increase. John would have left in honor. I do not believe he would have ended the way he ended. But in anger, envy, now Jesus, some of his disciples had left and they had gone to Jesus, remember? And John had so deteriorated, he got to a point where he began to discuss other issues and he found himself in prison. Watch this. John sent his disciples to go to the same Jesus he ordained and said, are you the Messiah? Come on, John. Look what envy degenerated to offense. Are you the Messiah? John, who said, behold the Lamb of God John who baptized Jesus is now asking are you the Messiah even the scribes and the Pharisees had come to terms with the fact that he was the Messiah Nicodemus came by night and said we know that thou art a preacher sent from God don't mind what we do in the day we already know and here is John saying are you the Messiah or should we expect another the language of envy the language of offense Watch Jesus. Jesus did not answer. He healed the sick and did all this. He said, go back. Tell John what you have seen. And then he said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. That's my answer to John. Go back and tell John, offense is about to destroy you. It's a prayer that I've prayed for myself. It's a prayer that I've prayed for everyone I love. That you will shield yourself by revelation from this cancer of envy. It can turn a good man of God to look like a beast. It can turn a good businessman to look. It brings, it's a depleter of anything. Add envy to anything and it reduces you to ashes. There are people in Kenya, this is their singular problem. There are people in Nigeria. There are people in South Africa. There are people all over Africa. They literally cannot sleep because the news of what God is doing in the life of others is such a torture to them. They lose sleep. They live on drugs. You mean this man has purchased this property again? Ah, what do we do? Someone killed. Can't there be a scandal around this life? Something that comforts me that this person is not that spectacular. They look forward to a news. Is there something? Can, can you find something? The character of envy. 
This businessman cannot be that spectacular. No, I'm sure he's doing something. This man of God cannot be that spectacular. I'm sure there's something. And because they are humans, you will find an I that was not dotted eventually or a T that was not crossed. Now, envy capitalizes on anything. And good news for envy when it does find something. And it will find because you are dealing with the world of men. So you find people overflogging simple matters is because envy is what is flogging it. Did you hear what I said? Overflogging simple matters. So the secretary forgot the file. Truly, he forgot the file. But why are you still discussing the issue after one month? Ah, it's not the issue of file. You just found the file issue as a scapegoat to help you vent out envy. Are we together now? Yes. Okay, the man of God quoted Genesis instead of John. Is that the reason? Did it alter your receiving Jesus? Did it alter salvation? Is it really the scripture? No, sir. Oh, Reverend Julian put a wrong account number. He missed it by one. Oh, okay, so you correct it. No, something must, I mean, how could he miss that one? Is it really the account number? Envy hides in anything, especially truth. Because truth can also be used by evil. The Bible says Judas, even though this was not a case of envy, Judas saw a woman break her alabaster box in front of Jesus and he rode through the wings of compassion to say, no, 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 no. This is a waste. That was greed speaking. But he spoke through empathy. He said, um, the money would have been gathered. Then he remembered, he said, and given to the poor. And the Bible says, no, it's not because he loved the poor. It's because he was a thief. So a thief can speak as a philanthropist and yet he's a thief. An envious person can speak as a counselor yet it is not counseling. He's not interested in your growth. He's venting out something. Are we together? Every time you find envy, it overflogs simple issues. The goal is not correction. The goal is to reveal flaws. The goal of envy is to reveal flaws. And the point is to try to downplay, to demean anything that looks spectacular so that it will find rest. I'm saying this to us because subconsciously, Many of us have found ourselves, I know some of you are laughing, but I'm honestly describing you in the name of honesty. You know it's just that I didn't put your name in this story. But I'm really talking about you. Now, I, don't feel bad. This is Rima face. I came in the spirit of love. Mm. Are we together? They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. They hated him because of his coat. Three things that will make men hate you. The love of your father. Hmm. No, you are not the only one who God loves. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of what is happening between you and him. But I can only talk for myself. They hated him because of his father's love. They hated him because of his dream. The vision he was carrying. And yet the Bible says all men have the ability to see visions and to dream dreams. And they hated him because a coat was given to him. You can't be a preacher and a businessman, a counselor and a diplomat is too much for one person. A coat of many colors. If you have one color, it's all right. But many colors is too spectacular. How do you see many colors and deny it? I'm looking at lovely women wearing all kinds of things. Many colors. You know? And you see there's red, there's all kinds of things. Like the rainbow all there. Many colors. So are you a man of God or you're a businessman? How do you excel in every area? It's not my fault. My father gave me a coat. Many colors. And you can be hated for that. I hear you're a counselor. I hear you're a businessman. I hear you're a diplomat. I hear, and you're excelling in all areas. Juggling them with efficiency. The Bible says whatsoever he doeth. 
prosperous. Who is God speaking to? Now, we're going to pray for one minute and then I will show you the biblical cure to envy. God is going to be healing us here. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray in one minute. Walk upon my heart. Walk upon my heart. Someone pray. A man of God pray. Someone desperate for growth pray. Walk upon my heart. Let the spirit of envy give way. Some of you have recognized it in all honesty. You have seen that it's there. It's been there for years. It's time to get it out of your life. It's time to step into a greater level of spiritual efficiency. Ah, 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 are you praying? Walk upon my heart. Please be seated. We have to pray. The cure for envy. I wanted to start on a simple note this morning. The cure for envy. We we'll pray for the sick in the evening. We all need healing this morning. And that healing is not just the healing of your body. Because a broken spirit can dry up the bones. You can have a problem that is spiritual. And it will tell on your health. Hallelujah. I want to give you by scripture. The cure for envy. And I give you a guarantee as touching the integrity of God's word. That anyone who will engage this. You will be free from envy. Is God helping us? The unity that only comes through Christ. Number one. The first cure for envy. Is to recognize and embrace your uniqueness. Recognize and embrace your uniqueness and see your uniqueness as a blessing recognize and embrace your uniqueness and then see your uniqueness as a blessing recognize and embrace your uniqueness apostle i wish i was that articulate and intelligent like reverend julian don't admire what may not work in your life. Focus on something God has given you. And you'll find out that you are equally, maybe not equally in all fairness, but you are uniquely, I think that's a, a better expression. You are uniquely valuable. Hallelujah. Key number one, the cure to envy. Recognize and embrace your uniqueness. And see your uniqueness as a blessing. Someone shout it to the hearing of the devil. Say, I am a blessing. Amen. Don't mind how you feel. Say it again. Say, I am a blessing. Amen. This is a healthy indoctrination that you need. Else you will not be able to survive in today's world. Pastor, you are a blessing. Don't tell me how many members you have. While you trust God for growth, recognize that even in that place, that church, you may not be the individual that people seem to be seeking around, but know this, that I'm a blessing. I'm not a burden to my world. I'm not a curse to my world. Someone shout it again, say, I'm a blessing. Amen. Genesis chapter 4, we read that earlier on verse 2. The Bible says that Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. A tiller of the ground. You may not have the, the privilege of being called into the apostolic or the prophetic ministry. But see yourself as a counselor with nobility. Do not see yourself less. And sometimes, as ministers of the gospel, we need to be careful the way we downplay and demean other functionaries within the body. There is a way you... It's, it's the same way with all due respect sometimes politicians sell certain offices it makes certain offices look too they over 
uh, they exaggerate certain things and they make people not comfortable where they are. They want to desire certain things and they begin to fight and kill for it. By the time you give an impression that if you are not an apostle or a prophet or a pastor, I don't know what you are doing in the kingdom of God. Now, you see, that, that, that idea already categorizes certain people and it puts them in certain uncomfortable positions. So, ministers of the gospel, we owe it to ourselves to appreciate the diversity within the body and to do it vocally so. Especially when you are in a position by the mercy of God where the nations can celebrate you. You would be in the best position to recognize and acknowledge others because now you are leveraging on that influence to make others feel good. Don't make people feel uncomfortable because you have arrived. No. In this place right now, watch this. There are media people all across this beautiful place. Are we together? Whilst I am preaching, they are aiding your understanding. If I mention a scripture with skill and intelligence, as anointed as you think I am, put me behind that laptop and see how I mess up your viewing experience. <laughs> see that? And it would be foolish of me to not acknowledge the presence of such people. When I came in, I heard worship going on and there were lovely people dancing. I mean, look the beauty in this place. Someone's creativity is the reason why we are comfortable here. Do you know that individual is as important as the preacher who is preaching? Say, I am a blessing. One more time, say it again. I am a blessing. Apostle, I may never have the opportunity to hold the mic at Rima first, but do not downplay your contribution. It is why some of us were able, I took a, a nice, uh, you know, glass of water somewhere. I was well taken care of in the green room. How do you downplay that creativity? They arrived here before me. They dressed up the place before my arrival. So you do not acknowledge the grace of God upon my life at the expense of their own relevance. I'm only in Kenya for two days and I return back. How about the pastors that labor over the people who are now here represented? How do you downplay them because you believe an anointed man of God just came? It would be foolish for me to believe that I can downplay all the pastors, the prophets, the intercessors, the prayer groups. You see that? When God gives you a position of honor, a position of grace, I mean some gentlemen, I think they are some Ugandas, where are they? Those my lovely guys. Now they did something. They made a beautiful portrait. They found everyone, you know, people who had imparted upon my life and then they put their own portraits too. They made one for me and one for Reverend Julian. As soon as I arrived, I was just trying to catch my breath and this gentleman came. That is uniqueness there. Ask me to draw you and see what I will produce. Walk up to 10 people and speak from the depth of their heart. Say you are a blessing and I need your blessing. Go ahead. You are a blessing. I need that blessing that is upon your life. Don't tell me what is not working in your ministry. Man of God, you are a blessing. I know you listen to my messages, but you are a blessing. Come on now. Appreciate the unique expression of God's grace. As a diplomat, you are a blessing. The cure to envy. God bless you. Now you return to your seat. Give Jesus a loud shout of praise. Hallelujah. Are we together? God bless you. Now look up, please. Look how healing that sounds. Even what you just did now. Do you know you just delivered someone? So I'm this valuable. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. Hold on. I hope you meant that line of the song. Because some of you have torn others in pieces. You've used your mouth to tear businesses, tear churches down. 
may this be a repentance service for you listen members too have to be careful they are the ones who join the heads of pastors together Saul killed 2,000 David killed 10,000 oh dear Saul and Saul says where is David let me kill him the women cause that trouble now now women I love you I mean the women in the Bible <laughs> are we together they began to sing honestly celebrating a valiant man and they said Saul killed how many thousand one thousand now David has killed ten thousand and the news got to Saul ah so I think we need to kill this man listen we must be careful even how we express the things that we call testimony in church with all due respect and I don't mean to bruise your ego it's too early I'm just arriving but 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 help me round up on time but just, let me just have your attention don't come and give a testimony like we were 10 in a bus from different churches then there was an accident and I was the only survivor and it is because of the prophetic word Joshua Selman gave over my life that may be a sincere testimony but these are the kinds of trouble we cause Kenya help men of God love one another are we together don't go around downplaying the investment of God's grace upon another preacher as a way of demonstrating the excellency of another person's work no don't do that remember we're still dealing with the commonwealth thing within the fold everyone wins even when one wins did you hear what I said within the fold everyone wins even when one wins I can share in the victory of Reverend Julian even though I have no business with what I saw there but it becomes my business because he's my brother and if you have a problem with that then uh, talk to our father I think he's the, the person the best person in that position so I can celebrate what he's doing genuinely not pretentiously genuinely are we together now you are a blessing I told myself this right from before God lifted me Genesis 12 and verse 3 in thee I'm speaking here to a man of God who is always angry when he sees another man of God with greater grace find comfort you are equally valuable there is a space for you in God's program are we together the reason why you do not find a whale in an aquarium is because there's no space for the whale there if the whale is a whale indeed go to the ocean leave the aquarium peacefully and let the fishes that have the size enough for the aquarium a whale does not beautify a house unfortunately so don't say you are too small you are just exact for the beauty of a room who is God speaking to hmm. apostle I just have five members and uh, I don't know why I can't become like so and so well if you can build those five members to be the five billionaires the five apostles the five prophets in Kenya you would have become the most successful man of God known in history it's amazing how that we look away from all that God has done in our lives and we begin to admire others to a point of envy jealousy offense then hatred admire and celebrate graces and gifts but not at the detriment of your own investment for one last time say I am a blessing yes sir a blessing the one who drove me those of you who drive who, who drive me every time I come here you notice I always tell you thank you it's a culture no matter how many times they drive me here taking me back I say thank you why because anyone who can do for you what you cannot do for yourself owe them thanks within that field there are many birds in the body of Christ trying to swim there are many fishes loving trees 
wanting to be on trees. No. When you use fishing to rate a bird, it will remain a failure forever. There are birds that can touch the sea briefly to pick fish, but they are not meant for the sea. Stay in your area of grace and find comfort there. I preached a message a few months ago called Rise Up and Walk. And it was a message to empower a generation. The miracle that happened at Gate Beautiful was only the final phase of the miracle. The real miracle was that the Bible says certain people carried the crippled man every day and returned him back. They were nameless, but they were the reasons why the apostle could see him. They carried him every day. Every day. The second miracle was that the man agreed to be carried. There are people who are crippled, but they will never agree to be carried where they will be healed. Rise up and walk. Number two, God is healing someone right now from envy. What is the second key? The second cure to envy gratitude first thessalonians 5 16 to 18 gratitude gratitude immunes you it immunes you from the spirit of envy gratitude give it to us please first thessalonians 5 and verse 16 rejoice evermore it says pray without ceasing then it says in everything give thanks for this is the will of God. Your condition may not be the will of God, but the attitude of thanksgiving in all conditions is the will of God. Can I tell you the truth? Everything you thank God for grows and it multiplies. And your appreciation of it also multiplies. Philemon chapter 1 and verse 6. Here's what the Bible says. That the communication of your faith might become effectual through the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. I like that. The acknowledging of every good thing that is in you in Christ. God gave you beauty. Don't shy away from it. Thank you, Jesus. And if you think that's not a great gift, pray that God takes it away. Then you see how many things will be left. Are we together? God gave you intelligence that the communication of your faith becomes effectual lord you gave me intelligence i thank you for it you gave me acumen for leadership thank you you've made me a pastor so desired by many people thank you you've made me a businessman you've given me ideas in the night ideas come and i've been able to build several businesses someone shout it from your spirit through your mouth say thank you jesus thank you. one more time say thank you jesus Yes, thank him for all that he's done. Thank him for his faithfulness. When you get up in the morning, look yourself at the mirror and say, thank you. I'm wonderfully and fearfully made. I'm a testament of God's love. He's loved me with an everlasting love and with his loving kindness, he's drawn me to himself. Lord, thank you for giving me this ministry. Thank you for giving me these children still struggling with the third born. He's still stubborn, but I, I thank you that he's alive. Thank you that he's in a house where um, he can be changed. Thank God! For what he's done in your life it is difficult to be thankful and to complain it is difficult to thank God and be envious Lord you gave me this you gave me that the story the parable of the talent is very instructive I don't know why God gave the man two rather than five the Bible says according to their several abilities but do you know the same commendation the man with ten got the man with two also got I used to think that there was no difference until I learned that the conditions that surrounded that, the temptations that came to all three was different. The man with five had the temptation of pride and complacency. He had the greatest talent. He overcame that to multiply it. The man with two had the temptation of envy, knowing he was second place, but he still overcame and most likely was mentored by the man who had five. To have replicated the same result the man who had one you see that it was messy that even brought that one because the end of the story justifies that he did not deserve more 
thanksgiving father thank you for my life thank you for breath thank you for health thank you for grace i'm telling you sincerely this is how i live i am grateful not just because i am me well i'm grateful for being me but i mean i'm just grateful for being a child of god behold what manner of love the father has bestowed upon us see that grateful to be me every opportunity i don't downplay opportunities i make every dealing of god in my life a special moment i don't act as if you would have been without god no i'm very vocal lord look what you've done in my life when i'm back from every service including this one i will go down my knees and say thank you your boy has come to say thank you that mercy again your mercy and your grace yes sir i mean it i mean it it's not because i'm standing on stage here hallelujah i had the honor this year to be invited for a lecture at harvard university and um, it was a very humbling time not to preach to deliver a lecture it's a great honor it's a different thing if a church calls you to speak but when an academic institution one of the most prestigious by any standard that they call you as a preacher i'm not an academician i don't consider myself one i'm passionate about knowledge but to invite you an institution will not risk their reputation on sentiments and so i remember getting down my knees i said father thank you If it ever happens good in my life, you are the reason. And I say thank you. Someone needs to say thank you, Jesus. That every time you slot in your ATM and something comes out, say thank you, Jesus. The Bible said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And lean not unto your own understanding. It says, in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Verse seven says, be not wise in your own eyes. It says, fear the Lord and depart from evil. If God is giving you victory in ministry, always say thank you, Jesus. Don't just say it in the secret, say it in the open. When you can thank God for your life, you can thank others for their contribution to your life. Say thank you, Jesus. So number one, appreciate your uniqueness see your uniqueness as a blessing as an advantage embrace your uniqueness number two gratitude number three are you ready the cure for envy number three very quickly is content for growth and increase in capacity the cure for envy contend for growth and increase in capacity for as long as you are small and you remain small, you will not be free from envy. Contend for growth. Galatians 4 and verse 1. An heir, he says, for as long as that heir is a child, he says he differeth nothing from a slave, even though he be lord of all. That means it is your inheritance in Christ. Oh yes. Inheritance. I can spend the whole day talking about that. Inheritance. That the inheritance that a believer has is not unique to any one believer. The inheritance that the saints have in light is generic. Access to grace. Access to wisdom. Access to the Holy Spirit. Access to the resources of the world. And that you can use this as tools to create a great destiny. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. The same Lord is rich. He does not show favoritism. God does not have grandsons. He has sons. Sons. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. The Bible says, now are we the sons of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be like. But the Bible says, um, that's Romans chapter 8 from verse 18. It says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Verse 19 says, for the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation not of one son, not of one unique son. 
not one apostolic son not one prophetic son the sons of god that means there is a place for you that table of greatness has a place for you but it will happen by growth and capacity growth and capacity please look up there are many people who are victims of envy today because there are many requests i was teaching my people and i told them many things we call prayer requests were supposed to come to your life naturally through growth growth can deflate a man's prayer request many of the things that we say god bring to my life were designed to come through growth if the vessel is small it makes the oil look small the oil is never small but it assumes the shape of the container carrying it you see that now we can all be great we should all be great it's in our corporate destiny as believers let me repeat that again choosing my words carefully it's in our corporate destiny as believers to all be great literally be great in business in ministry in politics and governance in leadership in every endeavor in life it's our corporate destiny but there's no potential for glory to anyone who does not contend for growth contend for growth luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased 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 in wisdom your jesus increased in favor he increased in stature and in favor with god and with men with god and with men someone say i will grow shout it say i will grow say it again say i will grow first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 2 man of god you can grow you can become a greater version of yourself businessman there's no point envying another person there's space for you you don't find you hardly find two aircrafts crashing in the sky the space is too wide no matter what boeing whatever it is once you only find traffic on ground once you lift to the sky there's enough space enough space i have fed you with milk and not with meat why for hitherto you were not able to bear it neither are ye now able there are many of you god wants to do much in your life as a man of god it's in your corporate destiny there are certain anointings that come to your life but they were authorized to come to a certain version of you that anointing has not found the version it is looking for so it keeps going back it will have to wait until you grow apostle god told me he's going to be trusting me with ten thousand members twenty thousand fifty thousand no this version of you will be a destruction and a casualty if god should sell you like that to the nations no god is also a businessman he doesn't sell bad products he can work on it he's called a porter so if the clay is not well done he smashes it and builds it again and he does that for his name's sake namesake means his logo is on you and he protects his image god does not deliver a bad job no when you see a louis vuitton or a gucci or whatever it is and you look at it and that shoe you see something that you just know that someone someone has brought in a fake product because even though the right logo is there there are there are certain indices you have to find the detailing and when it is missing that's how god is so when you are bankrupt of character bankrupt of this god says no putting an anointing on this kind of person now i rather walk on the person so while you are fasting for power what god will be walking on his character first and you're saying lord is it that you can't bring, just bring the anointing we'll deal with character later on God says, no, I don't walk like that. Hallelujah. Growth and capacity. Reverend Julian did not start this way. I've had the honor of attending the Rima Fest for a few years. And I've seen the growth and progression. Do you know, when you grow, everything grows. Stop trying to get everything to grow. Just grow. When you grow, everything will rise to match your growth. Don't try to change friends when you've not grown. 
and everybody you draw people who are in your future your future self should be the one relating with them just because you save their numbers does not mean they are in your realm no try to call them they won't answer you it's a message imagine i hope you are not insulted are we together it's good to grow it's like someone with all due respect and not to insult you it's like someone who buys the latest suv that came out this year and you find the person with a gallon hoping to look for fuel and put inside you are not there because when you grow all the things that support that level also grow with you relationships resources access this is one way you measure authentic growth when you become wealthy by stealing there will the equation does not balance something else will not grow that should support that if you are just looking for an experience to challenge yourself that's fine but i mean if you want to exist in a realm no there are some things you should preserve your honor and live until you grow so sometimes when god hides you it's his way of meting out mercy so that it, it matters how you are sold to the world. I, I hate to use that word, but I hope you, un, you understand what I mean. When you sell a product, you are causing people to desire that product. And you have to, because impression matters. Impression matters. So God wants to fix you, to work on you, adorn you, and then tell the world, this is what I can do with people who are yielded. And in one moment, you become a voice of healing. You become a voice of grace. So stop coveting certain things in anger and envy. It is already in your destiny. Just grow to the version that would have that. Apostle, I'm trusting God to be able to host a meeting like this by myself. Okay? Um, let me speak as a consultant. So show me, let me see. I can tell you without prophesying. I can tell you whether you are wasting your time or whether it will come to pass show me the capacity the network are we together do you know how to negotiate for these kinds of things do you know the factors that need to be in place for such an event to hold i don't think i'm not interested then you will not have it and the greatest way to step into a destiny you desire is to appreciate the one that now models for you what you desire while learning from it that's why i celebrate and respect all the pastors who have left their busy schedules to come for rima fest to be inspired and to learn two things to be inspired and to learn if you see a level of excellence here beyond what you know don't assume you've always known it no your results show you don't know it so learn learn with humility when i sit here i learn i learn I'm passionate about knowing what else is not working in my life. Don't be embarrassed. Learn. Learn. Why do I invite people and they don't come? Learn. The, the labor of the foolish weary at every one of them because he knoweth not how to get to the city. There is a way to influence. There is a way to power. There is a way to access resources. How did Pastor Julian coordinate favor from all of these parastatals, these businesses that are in partnership with him? He was not born that way. Men define their possibilities through growth. They define their possibilities through growth. Businessman, thank God for what you have done. But if you remain small and you don't grow, you will envy everybody. Man of God, thank God for where you are. But do you know there are greater, there are still virgin dimensions in the spirit. Contend for growth. And the way you do it is by coming for events like this to expose you to what God can do with a yielded vessel. You go back provoked unto godliness. Not from a standpoint of jealousy. Lord, the same Lord is rich unto all. Let me carry this fire to my nation too. Let me carry this fire too. I remember many years ago, I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. Please sit down for a moment. I used to watch Reinhard Bonke. I attended his crusades. I mean, I saw tens of thousands of people. Very unassuming personality. And worst off, he would come and preach a very simple message. Annoyingly simple sometimes. 
And you know, when you have an investment of God's grace, the spirit of revelation, it comes with pride too. So sometimes you just shelve those things. If it's not working in your life, it is not there, period. You've heard my story. I think I've shared it many times in Kenya. That in one of the events, Pastor, I, I, I came early because I desired that grace. No room for envy. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Period. Don't argue and waste time and explain away. You are, you are, you are worsening the pain. Are we together? I remember I went for the crusade ground to the crusade ground with, with hunger and I saw them willing people and I said please let me participate and they said well you're not part of the committee I said I travel a long distance here committee or no committee I have to serve this grace I held onto the wheelchair God is my witness I was wheeling them to the front and I said Lord this is how it will also be in my meetings no room for envy wouldn't it be stupid for you to hear that I'm envying Renard Bonke, isn't it not laughable and childish? No. Who is ahead of you is ahead of you. Just find comfort. And teach yourself that they were ahead of you so that they will guide you to get there too. Are we together? When I was watching Pastor Julian as he was just churning out these strategies, I said, my God, you see, this grace bar, if it's not on your head, it's not there. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Daniel chapter 2, it says, then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. If, if it's not, you can crack your brain and read books, but once it doesn't come, it's not there. But when it comes, it shows. I'm praying for you. That which is meant for you. Because you have come here to contend for growth in the course of this conference. May the mantle for the new, the grace for a higher dimension, may it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. When I came in here and I saw our father in the Lord, I was so happy to see him. And we just exchanged pleasantries and I was eager to ask him questions. You see, this was a man that most likely when I was born or when I was a child, he was already interpreting at the crusades of Maurice Arulo here in Kenya. How do you now come to compare yourself? Because of crowd or travels? It is the foolishness of the younger generation. It is the reason why many fathers are dying with their mantles. Because we do not know what weight is in the spirit. A man may pastor 10 members, but the weight that man carries in the spirit. There is something called a kingmaker anointing. Kingmakers never become kings, but they enthrone kings and dethrone kings. So be careful. There are people you see who may not have a semblance of certain results, but there is, there is a depth, there is a covenant they have with God. You would have called Anna the prophetess a failure. But it was her. She was one of the three prophets that spoke to Jesus and spoke over Jesus. And so when I saw him, I was in a hurry to honor him. When our father here, I do not know him. Please sit, sir. I almost feel embarrassed that he's standing. You see that? Apostle, do you have to do that? That's why you will not rise. That's why many young people will not rise. Because they wouldn't learn. Take what I'm saying seriously. You are here and you insult everyone. Once I am richer than you, have more crowds, I think I'm better. No, sir, it doesn't work that way. There are rankings in the spirit. Acknowledge it with comfort. Are we together now? Yes. When I stepped out of the hotel, the man of God, I'm just seeing him for the first time. He just greeted and we exchanged pleasantries and I acknowledged and honored him. Find comfort in knowing that if I grow or when I grow that grace that I covet some of you the people you now admire the truth is that your calling and your election is even greater than the grace you are envying but because you have not grown God will have to make do with the vessel available until you rise you are admiring prophets or apostles not knowing that you have been ordained to be a cutting edge apostle a cutting edge prophet but because you have not grown every scripture you quote is wrong
Come on, go back and do your homework. Don't say, God, just anoint me anyhow. Be serious. Read books on church administration. Read books on leadership. Settle down, pray and fast. Build character. Build your word content. Build genuine power. And then the gates of the nations will be open. So don't go around coveting people's... Listen, don't covet a man's crown without coveting the cross that he died in. It's the cross that leads to the throne. Are we together? How did I get here? Let's round up. Please sit down. Please sit down. Please sit down. I'm trying to be as soft, gentle, and brotherly this morning. So number one, recognize and embrace your uniqueness and see it as a blessing. Just help two people. I just saw light. My God. Light. Light. Shama sabalika parodia sebati. You are stepping into a level of grace. We'll leave that for evening. Light. As I just said this, I saw light. Just like a flash of light. Light. There's someone God is saying, I should tell you that you have tarried long enough in this realm. There, is, there, there are dimensions you would have entered, but offense and bitterness has stopped you. God sent me to preach this message. You are truly a man of God. And there is grace upon you. You are in the making. But you tear down everybody. Tear down. You admire them sincerely. And covet what they carry. But you fight them as a way of dealing with jealousy. You will never get, that, get it that way. God is speaking to you. Let, let this teaching be a circumcision. A cutting away of the old. And to bring you into the new. Hallelujah. preparing for the new please write this we have to finish I've given you three number four the fourth key to deal with envy is to submit yourself to prayer James 5 13 the spirit of envy is an affliction and the Bible says is any man afflicted it says let him Father, this hurt and this hatred I have towards this preacher, this woman, this businesswoman, it is demonic because the character of love is not that way. You go back. Rather than arguing things around, go and deal with it, my God. Ah, there's such an open heavens here. I thought that this would leave this for evening, but what is God doing now this afternoon? Elande sabalako sabraki barandu you have fasted you have prayed hear what i'm saying you have fasted you have prayed this is a prophetic word for someone god is saying i should tell you deal with envy and deal with lust two things there is a man of god this is a prophetic word for you the lord is saying you have fasted and you have prayed but what is stopping you from entering the anointing of the new deal with envy and deal with lust these two things when you get them out of the way the mantle of your destiny will fall upon you write it down envy lust this is a prophetic word for a man of god deal with it deal with it submit yourself to prayer you see the greatest assignment of prayer that i know is for your growth and transformation reverend julian men can pray old carnal flesh sensual version of versions of themselves and pray i always give the example of a snake molting have you seen how reptiles molt they come out of their former self that's what prayer does luke 9 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistening. You can pray yourself into a more spiritual version of yourself. You can pray out jealousy, pray out envy, pray out, you know, backbiting, pray out the desire to rejoice over the downfall of others. When you find that cancer around, shut down and go for a retreat. Why am I envying my sister? 
Why am I envying another man of God rather than celebrating? I hear the uh, good news that this is what God is doing with Reverend Julian. Why, why, what is this thing that is forming in my heart? You lock yourself in the place of prayer. Satan, you will not get a hold of me. Not this time. I'm a matured believer. Shamaka parakatoskiata. Embreke paruskatia. Break out of that shell of flesh. Somebody say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. I'll give you one more and then we're done. Romans 10, 12. The Bible says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, the South African, the Kenyan, the Nigerian, the Ghanaian, as far as accessing your inheritance is concerned, it says the same Lord, the same Lord who lifted Reverend Julian, the same Lord who lifted our father and our mother here in the Lord, the same Lord who has lifted every man of God here, the same Lord who has lifted every kingdom business in Kenya and across East Africa. He said the same Lord is rich unto all, not all that want him, all that call upon him. Father, you have shown my brother kindness. The same Lord is rich unto all. I pray by mercy that you make the same investment in my life. And you pray. And because of the purity of your heart, God will grant it unto you. Someone say, I will pray. Now you can go to James chapter 4. Remember, it says you have not because you ask. You kill not knowing that the same thing is available in prayer. You kill. You look down on others. The healing anointing that came upon one person is still available. There are still more people who are sick who may never come to his crusade. God is looking for more healing hands. So why envy? Whereas you can go to God and say, Father, these hands are available. Take them to the nations. May they become extensions of your power. And like Jabez, God will hear you and deposit a grace upon your life. Is someone learning? Pray. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. There are two people who are going to begin to run now. Please hold them so they don't enjoy themselves. There is a grace that is coming on two of them. For in your presence there is life everlasting i will reverence you lord we'll have the time for impartation later on but reverend julian i sense with all my heart that something god has placed upon your life there are at least five people in this place that that grace Honestly, and I'm, I know that people shout under the anointing in church, but, but there are five, they've desired this investment of the spirit. And truly, it's in their call. It's not just a carnal, mundane desire. I don't know where the five are, but I pray for you. Apostolic exploits in the marketplace. Let that grace, by mercy, let it locate you right where you are. Let it locate you right where you are. Let it locate you. Let it give you a standing. Male and female, doesn't matter. The same Lord who called on his man servant and placed oil upon his life. According to Psalms 89, 20 and 21, I have found David my servant and he says, with my holy oil I have anointed him. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus that the grace that God has placed upon his servant, may that grace rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. Let me give you the last key. The last key that fights envy, the final nail that buries envy in the life of anyone is to walk in love. Walk in love in love Colossians chapter 3 walk in love 
Colossians 3, 14 and 15. This will be our final scripture in dealing with the spirit of envy. Above all these, read the first four words, please. One, two, go. One more time. And above your praying, above your fasting, above your contending for growth, above all this, it says, put on love. KJV says charity. But the word there is love. And the Bible calls it the bond of perfection. It brings perfection to everything you have. Put on love. Put on love. Put on love. When it has to do with love, the only way you get it is by asking the Holy Spirit to pour it in you. The love of God was shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. So when you find yourself walking in hate, bitterness, envy, you go to God in the place of prayer. Father, your love is not richly established in my life. Take away this spirit of hate. Let me be able to celebrate the victory. Let me celebrate your hand upon others and be comfortable with it. You see, love. Did you know that's the meaning of my name? What a good name. Selman means the way to love. Way to love. You never see me fight anybody's ministry, fight anybody's. If I have a problem with you, I pray for you from a distance and wish you well. You see that? Never get yourself in a position where you become the reason for the pain of others. It is not noble. It is not noble. That a preacher is crying, courtesy you, and you sleep sound and wake up. That an individual is going down, you close the business door because of mismanagement of this spirit, this cancer. And it is amazing how many people will go behind and stab you, then call other people and say, you are bleeding. Say, this man is bleeding. I mean, who would be so wicked to cause this man to bleed? And then they see the evidence of the blood on your own hands. Walking in love. I've seen God do more in my life because of love than because of prayer. I know you will not believe this. I'm a man of prayer by the grace of God. I'm a man of the word by the grace of God. But there are realms that even prayer warriors cannot get there. The Bible says, no eye has seen. No ear has heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of man. The things that God has in store for lovers. This one is a realm of love. You can pray from a corrupt heart. You can fast from a corrupt heart. Envy can be the sponsor of your fasting because you want it to so that nobody disrespects you. Unfortunately, God vets the heart of men before he extends his hands to them. But when you have love that you wish everyone well, when you hear that this person's company has a problem, you wish them well. Even if they hate you, you wish them well and leave them in peace. You see, you have secured yourself most people become vulnerable to demonic attacks because they do not know the power of walking in love. I learned early that love never fails. Love never fails. Now, you will look like a fool while you are practicing love. Many people will take you for granted like they've taken many of you for granted. But can I tell you, at the end, love always wins. You know what killed death, defeated sin? It was not power, it was love. Even what power could not do, love did. There remained these three. Faith that moves mountains. Hope that maketh not ashamed. And love. The Bible says the greatest is love. 
when he was done talking about the gifts of the spirit reverend julian he mentioned all the gifts of the spirit in first corinthians chapter 12. he said even with this let me show you a more excellent way then he goes to chapter 13. a more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love a more excellent way of doing business is to do business in love a more excellent way of counseling is to counsel in love a more excellent way of rebuking is to rebuke in love once you take away the love factor even if what you are doing is right it becomes destroyed love every time i come into this nation i will celebrate every man of god that i have the opportunity to meet doesn't matter whether you are great doesn't matter whether you are small once you are called in the name of the Lord and you are called to the service of the kingdom, I honor you. And even if you are not in ministry, the Bible says, honor all men. Then it says, honor the king. Honor all men. If I find someone sweeping in front of me, I will greet you with honor and respect. I still remember where he took me from. If I find you scrubbing the toilet for me, to make the room conducive you are deserving of my honor you see that now men of god listen let me challenge us and i'll wrap up with this there are many things that make me love your pastor his passion for god his diligence that sense of innovation but in my opinion the greatest thing about reverend julian that has drawn me to him is the sincerity of his love it's true. and I'm saying this sincerely hallelujah I'll be saying this for the first time his mom is here I love the family you would think I've, I've, I've told myself I'm one of the sons too mama did something the last time I came that touched me Mama brought a pen last year. I still remember it's a golden pen. And this pen belonged to Reverend Julian's father. And after Mama hugged me and gave me a big kiss, she brought that pen as a gift and gave it to me. Thank you. Love. I will honor her in life. And even the day she sees his face, she still deserves my honor. Let me tell you this. It is not always revelation and anointing that draws members. Your love life is a greater witness. It brings beauty and authenticity to your person. You can have all the revelation you have and people will hate you. And if a generation hates you, you will pay for it. I tell you that in advance. If a generation decides to hate you, that you do not secure favor with them. It's not always about manifestations and power and good preaching and business acumen. Sometimes it's about love, the way you treat others, the sincerity, the authenticity of your person. I spotted her while I was here. And I, I, every time I come, I receive my dose of the hug for the year. So my mind is going to give me my own hug for the year. Now I'm a man of God. When I'm done, I receive the hug of a son. Hallelujah. And in that hug, you see, are many things. Virtue pouring from her heart. A mother who can raise a son like this should hug you. I hope we are learning. When I honor our fathers, even the fathers in this land, it is because they have given us the opportunity to learn from their scars without experiencing their pain. They are deserving of our honor. Let me challenge you. Every young man in ministry here, anytime you see any elderly person, particularly in ministry, swallow your pride and honor them. I don't care what revelation you have. I don't care how many churches and parishes honor them. Let's restore honor. This is where both culture and spirituality meet. That honor, even to elders, 
is noble. My final words, envy is a killer. Envy is a cancer. Envy is a destroyer. But like I've taught you, use these keys. Fight it. Do not allow this conference finish. That unity in the spirit can never be attained with envy. I celebrate my friend and brother. He celebrates me genuinely. You see that now? Sincerely so. Sometimes he would just send me a lovely text and I say, oh dear, look at, look at this man. He should be busy doing something else. And now he's sending me a wonderful text. Can you be like that? Can people be comfortable when they see you? Can they share the good news of God's workings in their lives and not say they made a mistake telling it to you? Because your heart is so pungent that every time people tell you anything good, they regret it later on. Because there is a personality within you that fights everything God. God placed it upon his servant and he sent me here alongside all the great vessels who have shared and will be sharing in the course of this conference to charge you. You can pray. You can fast. You can study. You can be diligent. But if you do not deal with envy, it becomes a cancer that will become a mountain and it will stop you from going forward. Whilst you're seated, hold someone if you can as far as your hands can stretch, your left and your right. Let the healing process begin. Africa needs to be healed from envy. We have killed ourselves by ourselves. The businessmen in Africa did not die from others who came from other places. We need to repent. We have killed our prophets. We have killed our apostles. We have killed our missionaries. We have killed the finest. They didn't go to battle. They died at home. We killed them because of their dreams. We killed them because of envy. There are many pastors here who maybe are even discouraged. Where they thought they would get comfort, they were stabbed there. Where they thought they would find love. There are many homes today, when you hear that your brother is crying, you begin to rejoice. I told him, rather than feeling that pain, someone pray, Lord, we repent as a people. We repent as a continent. We repent as a nation. Kenya, you pray. Pray. It's time to deal with the spirit of envy. Please pray. You are speaking to yourself. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Wonderful, merciful, safe. Keep praying. Precious Redeemer and friend. Who would have thought that a lamb? Rescue the souls of men. Oh, you rescue the soul. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that are Hearts always hunger. Father, I receive the grace to love. To love my brother. To love my sister. To love my fellow man of God. We may not agree in everything doctrinally, but I still love. Our approach to ministry may be different, but I still love. There may be other character issues to correct in their lives, but I still love. I still love. I still love. You never win when you hate. You never win when you envy. You never win when you resent. Even if you are right, you will not win. Take this moment. I'm wrapping up. Let it be from the depth of your heart. 
You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. Let me encourage everybody under the sound of my voice. I want you to invite everybody you can find in Kenya. Everybody. There are people, whilst listening to me now, you know they should hear this sermon. Please be sure that they do not miss the other sessions. I know some of you are not going anywhere. You are here, securing your seat. But call someone, some preacher, some business person. Tell them that God is dealing with issues here. Please be on your way and let the refiner's fire do the purging, do the inner walking because it's time for greater glory. The Lord bless you and we'll see you in the evening. said hallelujah we want to appreciate God for the word we have just received how many of you know in Kenya we need this word how many of you know I needed this word and you needed this word If you see anybody occupying an office you admire, don't criticize. Pray for them. So that God will one day make you enter the same office. Really appreciate you, man of God, for allowing God to use you to talk to all of us. First of all, in the house of God. Because judgment must begin where? Must begin where? If we can judge ourselves, then we'll have the moral authority to challenge the others. But when we don't have the moral authority, we cannot challenge the business people, the political class, because we ourselves are victims of the same. Thank you. One more time, let's appreciate Apostle Joshua Selma. Tell your neighbor, this is our meeting. It's our day, it's our time, and it's our program. So we'll keep on running with it the way it goes. Can we say amen? amen? Let's allow the apostle and the ministers to go. Those of you who are here, Pete, to come. Don't, don't, don't quickly come. Hallelujah. Again, the ashes. I'm sending the ashes to you. You know, when I stand here, these are my sons. Um, when I stand here, I don't want you to leave them with any debt. I'm not saying there's a debt. But to see you and Adeni, so the offering number shall go up again, put it up there. So let's learn to respond to God's word with a sacrifice. Not an offering, a what? A sacrifice. One as for a son. Our program in the afternoon will run very fast so that the apostle can come back for the evening service. Is that all right? So we want to give you time. How much time are we giving for? That's why I call the two of you here so you can consult. Okay, let's take an hour's break. There are vendors out there. They are selling food, KFC, Galitos, um, Nyoyo, there are vendors out there. Come on, raise your hands towards me. I said your food is blessed. Your fellowship is blessed. Your, your break is blessed. In Jesus' name. So when you get your chips, just start. Come back.